Now, this is where the hardcore people come, amen, right? <laughs> amen. Okay, here we go. You ready? Okay, good. So I, you know, like to listen to God, and he tells me what to teach. So I'm going to believe that tonight's message is for everybody that's here. How many people here are like leaders in some way or training to be leaders or pastors? Raise your hand. No wonder. <laughs> You guys aren't trainers, you're, tra you're trained, and you're not training, you're trainers. Okay. And a big hand for Dave and Cheryl, because they're completely amazing. Like, completely amazing. Like, completely amazing. Okay. Every time I'm around them, I learn stuff. I love to be around people that I can learn stuff from. You know what I'm saying? Because my brain loves to be expanded. Okay. All right, so <clears throat> we're going to talk about how, you know, God anoints leaders with a mantle of power or a rod of power. You know, I saw a shepherd's rod in Dave's office. I should have grabbed it. But, you know, the shepherd's rod, it's a rod of power. And, you know, it's got... It's, it's for the shepherd to help the sheep. You know, it's got a hook on it in case one wanders off. You can hook them by the neck and bring them back. You know, you can use that to kind of guide them along and keep them on track. And if a wolf or something comes along, you can use it as a weapon. Shepherd's rods are very important. And they're, they're rods of anointing and power. They represent and symbolize power. But sometimes... <clears throat> leaders, and I'm not talking about just in the church, it can be a, a person in business, it can be, you know, a person over um, some kind of a situation in an office or a, or a company or anything, or, you know, people like that, or even, even including leaders in the church, have a shepherd's rod that's really a snake disguised as a rod. And we are hitting people over the head with a snake. And we're actually infecting people with those snakes and spreading demonic serpents because leaders themselves are carrying those serpents and they don't know it. <clears throat> I'm going to give you just a couple little stories here to, to, to prove my point. I was at a tent meeting many, many years ago in a very um, well-known respected person, I will not say their name, was a speaker at the tent. Very knowledgeable person. Had a lot of knowledge about the scriptures, about history, about the anointing, about everything. Um, and, you know, preached a really good message. But while I was watching this person on stage, <clears throat> standing behind him, upright on its tail, was a cobra smiling with big teeth like this such a proud looking snake looking so proud and i recognized that there was so much pride in this individual that it had attracted a serpent a large cobra and it had become his power source you know, the Bible says Leviathan in Isaiah 27 says Leviathan is a twisting, fleeing serpent. <clears throat> okay? And it also says in Job 41 that he's the king of the children of pride. So a lot of times if we get too prideful about our revelation, too prideful about our biblical knowledge, too prideful about how smickety smart we are, <clears throat> it's going to attract a serpent who then is going to become your real power source. Okay, I remember um, my team was there. I was one of the speakers. And uh, my team was there, and I gently and very discreetly leaned over to my head general and said, very quietly, please pass this on very discreetly and quietly. Do not allow anyone on our team to have him lay hands on them. I'm sorry that I even had to say that. 
Because I will not let my people be infected. Because he did line up everybody in the entire tent and went down and laid hands on everyone. There is a demonic transference. Now, does it land every time? No. It doesn't land every time. For people who are pure in heart and not walking in pride and are, have discernment and uh, their souls, they've been, no, nobody's perfect, but man, when you're pursuing it and you're staying humble and you're staying pure in heart, it closes off the ability for that kind of transmission or transference of spirits. But other people, not so much. But I wasn't willing to take the chance with my team. That's why I said, do not allow him to lay hands on you. And everybody kind of looked at me at first like, but he's so, just do what I say. Because I happen to see it. I remember another story, and I'm just sharing these stories to kind of prove my point before I then start building the doctrine, okay? Another story where <clears throat> I started listening to this one pastor online. What a revelatory person this, 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 this leader was. Man, could just take the scriptures and see things in the text that mostly nobody else had seen. Very gifted at their ability to not only you know, take a, a, a nugget out of the depths of the um, Bible, but also build upon that by harmonizing other scriptures with it. That is a gift. I like to think I walk in that gift. And so I really appreciated this man's preaching. And so I began to listen to him, thinking, you know, this was, I was being blessed by, his, by, his, by the anointing that he was walking in. But I started noticing something. And look, I'm, nobody's perfect. Let me make that clear as I'm saying all these things. I'm sure you guys notice stuff about me. Hopefully it's not demonically attached. Maybe it's just an, hopefully just an attitude issue or something. But Hopefully it's not a magnet and has a demon attached to it. Well, this one did. I began to listen to this person and began to catch him scolding and yelling at his team from the stage. You know, I need that scripture up here now, now, now. You know, like, and I could elaborate, but I won't. But you get the point. And it happened often. And it began to grieve me, you know, and I'm thinking, wow, this guy's so great. And then there's that. You know, how does he treat them behind the scenes in private? Is it even worse? And I, you know, and I want to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. I do. I, I don't want to judge people. I don't like that. People judge me for doing stuff, you know, and I don't appreciate it, especially when I know how I live. I live on my face, you know, and I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm just, let me just veer away from that because I don't want to focus on myself. But anyway... He began to do that often. And I, you know, started to think, oh, I'm not going to listen to him today. And then I said, no, I want to give him a chance, and I want to be fair. And, you know, I listened and all that. And it started to bug me, and I'm thinking, you know, maybe I won't listen to this guy anymore. But, so, you know, I, I was listening one more time one day, and I had my earphones in, plugged into my device while I was watching it on my device. So I'm doing that, and he starts in again with this berating of his staff from the stage in front of everyone. And all of a sudden, in the spirit, I saw two black snakes zipping up the wires of my headphones to come into my ears. You know, the Bible talks about that. Psalm 58, 4 says, the deaf adder that stoppeth the ear. You would not believe what these snakes attack. They cause cancer. They cause gout. They cause arthritis. They twist your spine. They bring um, curses upon the breast, upon their womb. I've seen breast cancer healed when snakes came out of people's breasts. I've seen uterine cancer healed when snakes came out of their uterus. I've seen prostate cancer healed when they came out of the prostate. They, they squeeze your money, your prosperity. They will separate your marriage. They cause divorces. I got scriptures for all of this. 
I'm not just talking off the top of my head. If I had time, I could go and biblically prove every claim I just made with the scripture. But they came zipping up those headphones towards my ears. I yanked those things off as fast as I could to avoid a demonic implantation. Now, I've got discernment, and I'm a snake hunter. But what about the people that aren't? How many of those people have been implanted? By a leader whose rod was really a snake, not a shepherd's rod. You know, Genesis says that the serpent is the most craftiest beast of the field. Sneaky is them snakes. They have camouflage technology. They're very hard to see. Think about snakes in the natural. Snakes in the natural are very hard to see. I, I just moved from Arizona to Naples, Florida. In Arizona, there's a lot of desert. There's a lot of rattlers in the desert. And honestly, if they didn't shake their tail, so many more people would get bit than, than, than do because the sound alerts them to the serpent because trying to see the serpent on the rocks and the sand is very difficult because their scales blend in with their environment. <clears throat> they are masters of camouflage technology. You go to the East Coast and you're raking leaves. You don't even see there's a snake in that pile of fall leaves because their scales blend in with the color of the leaves. You can be in the jungle and an 800-pound anaconda slithers through the treetops so silently that you can't even hear it. 800 pounds. And you don't even know it's there until it's dropped down and wrapped itself around you to kill you. They are masters of camouflage technology. These snakes are hard to see unless you're a snake hunter. We're all called to be snake hunters. And we're all called to get clean of the snakes that we are carrying around and we don't know it. I can remember when God first gave me this revelation. I'd had severe back pain <clears throat> for a long time. And I, I couldn't, no matter, you know, ice packs, heat packs, get adjusted, get a massage, buy a, a massager, take some aspirin, nothing worked. Then one day, a general of mine, I have this group called, I call the generals, and the senior general, who was like 90 years old at the time, a woman of, that had been a woman of faith her entire life, calls me, she says, Katie, you've got a big boa constrictor python wrapped around your body, and it's squeezing you. That's where your pain's coming from. And I said, I believe you. I couldn't see it, but she could. <clears throat> so I unwrapped it from my body and the pain went away instantly. It wasn't a backache. It wasn't stress. It wasn't all that. It was a snake. People are walking around carrying snakes and they don't even know it because they are masters of camouflage technology. Okay, do you hear me? Luke ten nineteen. can we put that up on the screen? Do we have screens tonight? This is Jesus saying, speaking. He says, Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by in any means hurt you. When Jesus is saying this, is he saying that we have snakes, authority over snakes in the natural? Well, I think that can be part of it. Look at Paul, got bit by a poisonous viper, shook it off. He was left completely unharmed, the Bible says. Poisonous viper normally would kill a person. So that's an example of someone having you know, authority, dominion over a serpent in the natural. But when you look at that scripture in context, we know that he's also talking about demonic serpents. He had sent out the 70, if you remember in this story, to go around from cities to cities to preach and prepare that place for his arrival. And it says this in verse 17. 
It says, when the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons submitted to us in your name. And he said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. And then go to the next one. And that's when he says, behold, I give you, let's put that up, authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Go ahead and put that up, 1019. And nothing shall in any means harm you. So in context, Jesus is talking about demons that take the form of serpents, that take the form of snakes. Now, obviously, because Jesus said this as the disciples returned, celebrating that they had power over the demons in Jesus' name, Jesus is inferring to them that some of the demons that they were casting out were snakes. <clears throat> Did you hear what I said? Now, I've got a master class on this. You should take it. Go to my website. I think it's there. You should take it. It's like 11 sessions. This is powerful stuff. Because I could preach on this forever, ever, ever. But I'm honing in on a specific message tonight. Okay. <clears throat> Notice it says, I've given you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I want to break that down really quick because we're going to use this as we go into activations. That word authority there is exosia. Now, we have a graphic that I'd like them to put up on the board. The word exosia means it's the power of judicial decisions. This is one of the meanings of that word authority, the power of judicial decisions. What does this mean? You have the power to take snakes to court. Never thought you could do that, huh? Wow, I can take a snake to court? Oh, yeah, there it is. Bam. You can take them to court and release a judicial decision against them. Sometimes you have to do that because you can't, sometimes you just can't see them. After this tonight, you're going to have dreams. You're going to see snakes. It's going to open up for you. Okay? Now, let's look. It says that Jesus gives us exosia authority. Everybody say exosia. Say, I've got the power of judicial decisions. <clears throat> against every serpent and every scorpion. It says, and they will in no means harm you, hurt you. That word hurt, find that graphic for us because we're going to look at that word hurt. It's very interesting. It has multiple meanings, but I'm just focusing on one tonight. The word hurt, we'll put it up on the board as soon as they find the um, graphic for it. The word hurt there actually means a criminal who has broken the law in some way. Again, proving these snakes are criminals that have broken the law. Where do you take a criminal? You take them to? Thank you. <clears throat> They've broken the law in some way. You can take them to court. You can release the power of judicial decisions against them. Jesus has given you that authority. He won it for you at the cross. Amen? This is very important to know. It's very important to know. It's very important to know. Let me tell you how important it is. Let me share a little story with you. And we'll play her video real quick. Do we have the, um, what did we name it? Jamar or the kangaroo thing? <clears throat> we named kangaroo? Oh, Kayla. Kayla. We named it Kayla. Okay. So I was at a meeting. And I walked in. The place was crawling with snakes. <laughs> crawling with snakes. I walked in. I turned. And one of the guys that's been with the ministry for like 30 years was sitting there holding his hand like this. And uh, he was trying to work while he was doing it because he's, you know, he, he, he's one of the staff members. And I said, what's going on with that? And he goes, oh, man, I have really bad gout. I've had it for like 20 years, and I have really bad arthritis. He said, I see all these lumps on my arms. It's all swollen, and then the pain is excruciating. And I went, well, that's because you got a snake wrapped around your arm. And he goes, what? I said, because you have a snake wrapped around your arm. He goes, okay. I said, well, why don't we pull it off? And he goes, okay. So <clears throat> I prayed for him. And I'll share about that video about how you can do that. And I began to judge that serpent, uh, release fire on it. We'll talk about that too. And pull that snake off his arm. Immediately the pain went down to like 40% from 10 to like a 4. Okay. And he could start to move his hand because he couldn't move it before. 
And I said, okay, <clears throat> let's take it the next step. I said, see all those lumps? He goes, yeah, that's like inflammation and, and arthritis. I said, no, that's snake venom. And your body's going to vomit it out right now. So I got some communion. Communion represents the cross. We take communion in remembrance of him. And what's the very first prophecy about Jesus? The seed of the woman will crush the head of the seed of the serpent. Where did the crushing take place? At the cross. So I feed him communion. <clears throat> I command his body to vomit out that venom. And by a couple hours later, all the lumps are completely gone except for a small little bit here. He can fully move his hand now and he has no pain. So then I go and as I'm walking up to the stage, I see another guy. I pray for him. He had a snake around his foot, so I pulled the snake off his foot. He couldn't walk, and then the snake is gone. Now all the pain is gone. All the inflammation is gone, and now he can walk. So I'm like pulling snakes off as I go up to the front. Okay. So then I get in the front, and I'm sitting on the seat, and, and there's a crowd of people up at the altar worshiping. And I'm looking up, and I see a worship leader, and she's down like this singing. And she's singing, right? So I think she's down on her knees singing because she's very low compared to everybody else. So then, you know, worship's going, going, going. It's terrific. <clears throat> and then it's time for me to come up. <clears throat> so I come up. <clears throat> excuse me. I've been talking a lot, you think? Um, so then I come up, and I realize that she's not on her knees. She's got, though she's got the same kind of size torso as me, she's got little tiny legs. And so that's why she was that low. So I preach the message. It's about snakes. I'm pulling snakes off people. Miracles are happening. Next day, I'm in the green room. I just had preached the morning session. I go in to get a little bit of a snack. She comes in to have a little snack. And uh, she says to me, you know, I had a dream a couple days before this conference. And I went, yeah, what was it? She goes, I dreamt that I was standing there looking at this field. And this kangaroo with a baby in its pouch came walking out of the field towards me. And as it did, I realized it had a big python snake wrapped around it. I went, uh-huh. She said, it looked at me, and then it walked by me, and as it did, I heard the words, broken bones. What do you think that means? And the Holy Spirit, just like that, like a lightning strike in my head, I went, I know exactly what it means. She goes, what? I go, your mom is the kangaroo. You're the baby in the pouch. When your mom was pregnant with you, that python was wrapped around her, and it broke your bones, and that's why you're born like that. I said, kangaroos don't walk. They hop. And she goes, oh, my God. My mom died of a respiratory disease. Because that python wraps around your chest and causes asthma, respiratory problems, and everything else. I said, not only did it break your bones, it killed your mother. And she was like, oh, my God. I'm like, are you ready to pray? She said, yes. <laughs> so this is in the green room. I think Real Talk Kim was there and a couple other people. So she got up, stood by me. I put my hand on her head, and I said, I demand justice, justice, justice for you. I release exosia authority, the power of judicial decisions. I go back in time, and I judge. I judge that serpent for what it's done to you. And she went, Whoa! and she shot up underneath my hand. Now, we're going to play her video. She was leaving right then. She got in the car, and she sent me these two videos. Let's watch them. Go ahead. My name is Kayla, and um, Katie had prayed for me uh, about my height because I had a dream that I had had, and um, <clears throat> it was revealed that, you know, there was an anaconda spirit, and it had broke, um, you know, it was a generational thing. It had broke my bones to where I was, my growth was stunted. And I'd had this dream, and I was telling her about this dream, and she gave me that revelation. She was like, I'm praying for you. I heard the Lord say he's going to give you three inches. 
Well, we were praying, and even everybody in the room could feel like I felt I was coming off the ground, and um, and everybody was like, we prayed like twice and things, and uh, someone said, I see you in your car. I see you having to like pull back seat. I see you in your car, and I've been like really, really short. I cannot reach the pedal because I have really, really, uh, I have a long torso with short legs. So tell us how tall you are. You were. I was four, nine. I'm not sure what. I mean. <laughs> she said three inches. But look at this. I have I have very very short legs, and I would have to take it all the way up. This is all the way up. You see my knee is bent yeah. right here. Like see how my leg, how bent. And that's how far up you had it. Had to go, and it would be like, you know, comfortable. But this is bending, and my foot's even bent. I can't even do it. So this is how I, I got in the car just a while ago, and I was like, man, it's stuffy. What's going on? And I had like, pushing the the thing to make it go back. Back comfortably right there. Please, oh, it's not. I'll probably go back further. Yeah, I think she's going I can't go back further. <laughs> and I used to have to like take my seat and raise it up to see above. Yeah, but she even prayed for strength in my body and things. And like, when I see you down, I just see it's just <laughs> you're gonna have a new perspective. Yes, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> So we stopped to get gas on the way home. I know this is so funny. But I get out and I start walking. And my feet, I can feel like this raised up arch or something like this turn in my foot. I'm telling Kim. And I take my shoes off and look. And there is a, look at this. I didn't have that. You can ask my husband. And that's not, you see, it's not the steering wheel. My husband raises my feet all the time. It is not arched like that. My foot, it's like. It's curved. It's curved. Yeah. What way? Yeah, like that. Oh, yeah. Wow. Like yeah, I didn't have that before. Did not have that before. And the whole trip, my feet have been going uh, numb and itchy and numb and itchy. And I've even pulled my seat back two more times. It's like, <laughs> Jesus is doing it. <laughs> I want you to get the. I want you to get the gravity of that. A snake did that to her. Let that sink in for a minute. A snake did that to her. Did you hear me? You know why I could get it off her? Because my rod is not a snake in disguise. I came here to get you free from that. So you're not imparting snakes. You're imparting the anointing. You hear me? Okay. All right. Whew, I'll tell you one more story and then I'll start teaching. I'm sorry. So I got a call from a well-known person who asked me to pray for a family member. This person had had breast cancer for numerous years. So I got on the phone with her. Before I got on the phone with her, I saw a, a vision of a bed, which normally represents to me a sick bed, but it had cheetah pattern sheets on it. Cheetah is the fastest uh, animal in the world. I knew this miracle was going to happen quick. So I got on, and I talked to her. And she said she'd been through a lot of trauma in her life. Trauma is the number one attractor of snakes. When you're in trauma, a snake comes. It takes advantage of your trauma. So we worked on that. Then she said, I also was involved in witchcraft as a youth because of the trauma. Witches work with snakes. The woman with the spirit of divination that follow Paul, them around, shouting, these men are here to show you the way to the Most High God. That word divination, that's witchcraft, right? The word divination has a one-word meaning in the Greek. Python. Guess who was talking to Paul? The snake speaks. It spoke in the garden. It speaks. You've been hearing noises in your head, your voice in your head telling you all kinds of stuff that sounds like God, but feels like it isn't? It's a snake. 
He's here. These men are here to show you the way to the most high God, the way to salvation. That was a snake saying that godly sounding stuff. So if you think you're hearing from God and you don't feel good inside, you're not. It said Paul was grieved for many days. I was glad it said many days because I didn't feel so stupid when I wouldn't catch on for a snake for a while because they're masters of camouflage technology. But he finally got it and cast that thing out. But you see, witches and snakes work together. So she said she'd been in witchcraft, so I had to renounce that and everything else. And then she told me about the breast. The breast, she'd been listening to me for about six months. The breast was about the size of a baseball, rock hard. But since she had started listening to me, and it started cratering. It had a moon crater in the middle of it as it was collapsing. The edges around the crater were dark and crusty and hard and dry. And it was expelling a putrid-smelling goop for about four years. So then after we judged all that, got rid of the witchcraft, got rid of the trauma, then I pulled that snake off her breast. And we're going to put that scripture up too. I pulled that snake off of her breast, and then I commanded her dirt body to vomit out the venom. Immediately, the breast, the tumor shrunk 50, 60%. As soon as the snake was gone. The skin, instead of being white and necrose looking, turned pink and healthy. The ridges started getting smaller. And she texted me then after about five days and said, for the last five days, this runny yellow liquid that looks like snake venom has been draining from my breast. And it just kept on getting smaller while the breast tissue reformed. This is real. This is real. Now let's talk about that. Matthew, Mark 16, 15 through 18. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned, and these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents. And they will drink anything deadly, and it will by no means harm them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Look, this is the Great Commission. You know what the Great Commission is? It's Jesus commissioning every single believer to do all those things. Not just Katie Souza. Every single believer. Every single believer. We all need to be snake hunters. You know, a lot of preachers just kind of slide over that part. And they will speak in new tongues. They will cast out demons. They will pick up serpents. They will lay hands on the sick. They don't know what to do with it. Well, I'm glad I do. And you should be glad you're going to do, you're going to understand it too. Because we're supposed to take up these serpents because they're out to harm us. They're out to harm us. The word take up there, it's the Greek word iro, iro. I don't know if you can find that board, but I, I sent it. It means to remove anything that's attached to, to remove something that's attached to anything. They are attached to anything like I already said. Your breasts, your body, your spine, your marriage, your kids, your money, your mind, you name it. Don't even think, I mean, people are like, snakes? Yeah, the first, very first demonstration of a de demon in the Bible is snake in the garden. All the way to the end of the Bible where a serpent's called that old serpent. Satan's called that old serpent from the beginning to the end. Okay? But we're supposed to take these serpents up. Amen? Now I want you to close your eyes and say, Lord Jesus, I decree, I will take up serpents. I will exercise my XOC authority, which gives me the power of judicial decisions. I am legally able to take these snakes to court. They're out to harm me and my family. But I have been given the authority, the XOC authority by Jesus to judge them in the court of heaven and to remove them from everything they're attached to in the name of Jesus. Now give God a praise for that.
We're going to talk about the end, what allows these snakes to come in in the first place. But just know that Ecclesiastes 10.8 in the King James, and in other versions, of course, gives us a, a, an overall spectrum of what? God has put a hedge of protection around us. The, the, that scripture in Job is real. He has placed a hedge of protection around you. But there are different things that breaketh a hole in the hedge. See, that says, he that diggeth the pit shall fall into it. And whosoever breaketh the hedge, a serpent shall bite him. God has put a hedge of protection around us. But certain things breaketh a hole in that hedge. And allow a snake to come in and bite you. Trauma is one of them. Witchcraft, you already heard. Witchcraft is one of them. Idolatry is one of them. Why idolatry? Because when you make anything into an idol, you're actually empowering witchcraft. Because Jezebel didn't have any power on her own. She got her power from the idols she worshipped. So when you have idolatry, it allows a witchcraft curse to come against you. And witches always work with snakes. I don't have time to prove the doctrine. I can, but I don't have time. But just know this. If you have idols in your life, the Bible says you're cursed. And if you're cursed, that's witchcraft. And witchcraft always works with a snake. Woman with the spirit of divination. See, witches curse. Snakes are the muscle that carry it out. It's not like the curse just lands and starts doing stuff. The curse lands because there's an opening. The causeless curse cannot alight. But the curse lands and then a snake carries out the curse. It's the muscle. I understand that because I used to be a collector. I was the muscle. People told me this and this person owes me money. Go get it. I went and got it. I muscled that person and made them pay. I understand that. So those three things you have to be aware of. Idolatry in your life allows a curse to land on your life and then that snake is going to carry out that curse. These are some of the things that break the hole in the hedge. Your mouth breaks the hole in the hedge. Romans 3. The poison of asps. If we have it, put it up. The poison of asp is under the tongue of him whose mouth is full of bitterness and cursing. If you're speaking bitterness or cursing or you're complaining against people or being offended or being bothered or whatever else, you've got the poison of asp underneath your lips. You are a snake magnet. You might as well go, here, snakey, snakey, come and get me. I'm mad. I'm mean. I'm bitter. I'm upset. Oh, yeah, you're going to be worse after this. You're going to have a snake coming out your mouth, biting people. You know snakes spit venom at people? Well, that's what happens when somebody's mad and they're like, <laughs> spitting venom at you, snake venom. No wonder you feel toxicized when somebody loses it and goes off on you. They've got the poison of ass under their lips, whose mouth is full of bitterness and cursing. Don't be that person. Because as soon as you go there and you're bitter on somebody, you're offended somebody, you have a snake on you. Put your hand on your mouth. Say, Lord God, I repent for every evil word, every complaint, every disgruntlement, every gossip, every evil malicious thing I've ever said. I put the blood on it. I put the cross in my mouth. The place where Jesus, the seed of the woman, crushed the head of the seed of the serpent. I decree the cross, Jesus, the blood is crushing that serpent. Because my sin is washed clean with the blood. Now I pull that snake out of my mouth. I take it up and I pull it out. 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 Out in Jesus' name. We were just ministering to somebody not too long ago and their tongue was doing this. What is that? That's right. That thing will cause food disorders. Food disorders? That's how it started. The garden. Eat this fruit. It's good for you. You won't die. Yeah, right. The snake speaks lies. If you've got a food thing going on or some you know, disease in your intestines, some sort of an allergy, food allergy, 
You, you can't stop eating. That's a snake, baby. I actually pulled a snake off of somebody and she lost five pounds. Because the snake actually has matter in them. Don't get me started. Okay. <laughs> I've only just begun <laughs> to be weird. <sighs> right. Weird is hallelujah for sure. Okay. All right. Now I want to focus because I want to get to the message. <laughs> fire is one of the things that drives snakes out of hiding. Okay. Snakes hate fire. They hate fire. You know, I've had firefighters tell me one of the most dangerous part of a fire in a forest is not just the fire. It's the snakes that are running from the fire. <laughs> they come out at you, biting. Okay. They hate fire. Well, demonic snakes hate supernatural fire. You remember the story with, um, with Paul? He'd gone through a vicious storm. I mean, this is how trauma is connected to snakes, okay? What a storm he went through. I mean, it's like, wow, they had to throw over all the money that they were carrying on the boat. They threw over all the furniture so they couldn't sleep or rest. They threw over all the food except for a little bit left. They, um, it says it grew so dark and the storm was hurricane proportion. They didn't see the sunlight for 14 days and they gave up all hope of being saved. A lot of us have been through those levels of storms. Not just one thing, but one thing after the other, after the other, after the other, after the other, after the other. Trauma, man, in this season is coming like waves, baby. It's trying to fill up that boat to sink your boat. It won't be just one attack. It'll be multiple attacks at the same time. You've already probably gone through it. If you have, raise your hand. Have you gone through the wave after wave after wave after wave of trauma? Yeah, this is a demonic strategy to get you wounded. Then a snake can bite you and kill you. See, now it's a good thing, and I won't preach on this totally right now, but did you know that um, Paul took communion on the boat? He did. He said, now, hey, look, you know, an angel's told me that we're all going to live, but now you need to take some food. You haven't eaten for 14 days. You need to take some food to be comforted. And it says, so, so now encourage yourself. Take some food so you can be strengthened. And it says that then Paul took bread, and he broke it, giving thanks to God, and he ate it. Go look at the language. Go look it up. Go look it up in the Thayer's Concordance. Go look it up in the Strong's. The word bread there means the bread broken at the Lord's table. The word break means the, to break the bread at the Lord's table. He took communion in the middle of the storm. Why? Because, see, this is a place where the seed of the woman crushed the head of the seed of the serpent. This is why when the boat wrecked and wedged up against the reef and he swam to the shore and it was a rainy night, it was cold, and he gathered a bundle of sticks, and he didn't realize there was a poisonous viper inside that bundle... But then when he, when he threw it on the fire, the fire drove it out of hiding. And then when it bit him, he was left unharmed. Why? Because the fire drives the snake out of hiding. And the communion makes sure that when it bites you, you can shake it off and you're left unharmed. Because that is the place where Jesus crushed the head of the serpent. Fire in communion, baby. Fire in communion. See, fire will drive that snake out of hiding. You can't see it, but when you soak in fire, when you decree fire, when you play fiery songs, when you say fire scriptures, when you just have a fiery relationship with God and you stay in his fiery presence, that fire is going to drive that snake out of hiding. I know I probably told this story, but I'll just tell it again because it's a great example. I woke up one day and noticed that I had an indentation in my right breast. And I was like, what is that? It was like as deep as the tip of my pinky. That's pretty deep. So I was like, what is that, man? So I went on tour, and, you know, I was looking up things. Indentation in breast could definitely mean cancer. So I was like, mm. So I'm on tour. I'm in Ohio. And I'm asking God what to do. And he said, I want you to soak in fire all night. Because you're, gonna, you're like Paul. You've been walking around carrying a snake, and you didn't know it. See, Paul was walking around carrying that snake, and he didn't know it. It was camouflage. They're the masters of camouflage technology. It looked like just like one of the sticks that he picked up. You're carrying around a snake, and you, you can't, you don't know it. You know, it says he picked up a bundle of sticks. That word bundle means a multitude of men. See, the multitude of men, the snake is hiding in the multitude of men. So 
So there I was, and the Lord says, be like Paul, throw down the fire. So I put on Missy Edwards, all-consuming fire. And I'm singing it over and over and over again. All-consuming fire, you're my, it's midnight, you're my heart's desire, burning flame of love. Come baptize us, come baptize us. All night, singing, falling asleep, waking up, singing, falling asleep, waking up. In the morning, I have a vision. I have a vision of a bloody bandage wrapped around me and a snake up with its tail striking at me with its venom, venomous jaws and fangs. And I said, what is this, Lord? And he said, you have a wound in you from trauma. That, that bandage, that linen bandage, if you read what the meaning of it is, it means um, a piece of bandage that's used to heal a wound. He said, you've been through a lot of trauma. You have a wound in you from trauma. He goes, but you soaked in fire, and it drove that snake out of hiding. I said, what's that snake trying to do to me? He goes, it's trying to give you breast cancer. I was so mad. I was so mad. I was like, oh, Satan, you know. Whoo, now this time you cross the line. Now you're touching the goods. I said, the papa is not going to be happy. I was so mad. But see, I'd seen the head. See, the fire drives that thing out of hiding so you can see it. And if you see the head, you got it. If it's still buried in there and you can't see the head, you need more fire. Because that fire will drive it out of hiding. Amen? So he said, take it up. Jesus told you, take up serpents. Take it up. I put on this, this prophetic. I put on a, like a metal glove. I pulled it off my breast. I threw it in the fiery pit and commanded it to burn and not return. And then I go home. The Lord says, now take communion for three days, a lot. So I'm taking communion, taking communion, the bread of life, the bread of life, the bread of life, the bread of life, the place where Jesus crushed the head of the serpent, the bread of life, the bread of life, the bread of life. Every night, I'm curled up in the fetal position like this, holding my boob. Ah! I'm thinking, I made it mad. It's still there. <laughs> Why am I having this pain? Three nights in a row. But it wasn't that. I woke up on the third day, walked in the bathroom to take a shower and looked, and the, the indentation has completely filled in. The pain I was feeling was the regeneration of my flesh from that. The fire drove it out of hiding. This regenerated. Are you with me? Fire is very important. That's why sometimes it's, I, I see, and there's a time for it. There's a time for it. I'm not, I'm not saying anything negative. There's a time for us to be like this during worship. Or there's a time for that. There is. There's a time to be quiet. There's a time to meditate. There's a time for that. But sometimes you need to open your mouth and sing and praise and, and speak in tongues. Fiery tongues, not just a because you got to drive that snake out of hiding. Did you hear what I said? So this, the, the fire drives it out of hiding, but it also heals the, the landing strips, the trauma, the witchcraft, everything. It burns it up. Fire burns up the chaff inside your soul that allows that serpent to come in in the first place. Okay, and the good example of that is in Matthew 3 where John the Baptist is um, baptizing in the Jordan and the Pharisees come. Let's, let's put that up, Matthew 3, 1 through 3 and 7 through 10, there it is. It says, in those days there appeared John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness desert of Judea saying, repent, think differently, change your mind regarding your sins and change your conduct for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming for the baptism, he said, oh, you brood of vipers, who has warned you to flee and escape from the wrath and indignation of God against disobedience that is coming? I'm going to stop right there. He's calling men brood of vipers. Why? This proves that snakes can control people. They control the way they think. They control the way they act. They control what they say. 
This also proves that a religious spirit, a religious spirit is snake-like. Stop being judgmental. People don't look like you. They don't dress like you. They come to church with their boobs hanging out. Pray for them. I'm just saying. <clears throat> it's uncomfortable for me too to see that kind of stuff. Pray for them. But don't judge them because then you're a Pharisee and you're being led by a snake. <clears throat> just saying. And yeah, sometimes there's a Jezebel thing on that so you tutor them, you mentor them, you, you get them delivered. Okay, so it says, he called them brood of vipers, meaning these are men being controlled by snakes. Who warned you to flee and escape from the wrath and indignation of God against disobedience that is coming? Bring forth fruit that is consistent with repentance. That's part of the communion. When we take the communion, we examine ourselves and we repent. We judge ourselves, lest we be judged. That's what Paul said. In 1 Corinthians 11, judge ourselves, least we be judged. We repent. We bring forth fruit that's consistent with repentance. Let your lives prove your change of heart. And do not presume to say yourself, we have Abraham as our forefather, for I tell you, God is able to raise up descendants. I'll get to verse 10. It says, and already the axe, he's saying this to the Pharisees who are controlled by snakes. And already the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the Continue. Go to the next one. Go ahead. Do we have a next one? Do we have a next one? Yep. Yeah. Indeed, I baptize you with water because of repentance. That is, because of your changing your mind for the better, hardly amending your ways with the abhorrence of your past sins. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy or fit to take off or carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and his winnowing fork, his shovel is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clear out and cleanse his threshing floor and gather up and store his wheat in his barn. But the chaff he will burn up with that cannot be put out. What's this talking about? Jesus comes with a baptism of fire. Who's he talking to? The, oh, you brood of viper Pharisees. He's telling them, here's a remedy for your snake affliction, your snake infestation. Repent and burn with fire. Because, see, Jesus takes his winnowing fork and he whatever, he separates the chaff from the wheat. And he burns up the chaff with unquenchable fire. What does that mean? Inside all of us, there's chaff and wheat. There's good stuff and bad stuff. There's good attitudes and bad attitudes. Maybe you're a person who's very joyful, very giving, very friendly. But at the same time, you, you could be resentful and jealous. Well, Jesus wants to keep the good stuff. He wants to keep the joy and, and the, the friendliness and the helpfulness and all that. But he wants to burn up that, that jealousy stuff. So he separates the chaff from the wheat and burns up the chaff with unquenchable fire. He was actually saying to the Pharisees, there's hope for you. You got a bunch of junk in your trunk that's chaff. If you repent and submit to the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire, that chaff will burn up. And then you won't be old brood of viper people that are controlled by demonic snakes. Now notice he's talking to leaders. They're the ones that have the rod in their hand that are, dis that are disguised, serpents in disguise, masters of camouflage technology. Did you hear what I said? They're beating people over the head with their snakes. They're the ones that are l releasing snakes on people because of their doctrines from hell. We don't want to be those peeps. Okay, now we're going to get to the story. <clears throat> Paul was walking around carrying a snake and he didn't know it. The fire drew it out of hiding. And then what happened? Paul went on to do a revival in the, in the whole island. He prayed for everybody and they all got healed. All the snake infected people on your island will get healed once you're desnakeified. He was a true snake hunter. But you know who the original snake hunter was? The original snake hunter was Moses. <laughs> Moses had a wild life story. We, we know it. I'll just review it. You know, Pharaoh put out an edict that all the baby boys were to be killed. So his mother fashioned his basket, put him in it, 
sent him down the Nile. His little sister Miriam followed him. It just so happened by God's providence that Pharaoh's sister or daughter, Pharaoh's daughter, was bathing in the Nile and saw the basket. And she had her girls go get it. And they pulled this baby out. They said, this is one of the Hebrew children. Miriam comes running up and says, I, I know somebody that can nurse him. It was his mother. And he gets nursed by the mother, but then ends up coming back and living in Pharaoh's household. Moses was raised in Pharaoh's household. I mean, that meant he had access to all the finest foods, all the, <clears throat> all the incredible entertainment and all the incredible benefits of being an Egyptian royal prince. You know, he had the best education. They say that the you know, archaeologists have proven that some of the best universities in the world and history were actually in Egypt at that time, equal to the universities we have today. Egypt understood something very important. The smarter your and more educated your citizens are, the stronger the nation is. They understood that. Now, part of the education in the time of Moses, when Moses lived in Pharaoh's household, was everybody that went to school was required to learn about the vast pantheon of gods that the Egyptians worshipped. Because each and every god had specific ceremonies and requirements that needed to be done to worship them so that they would be appeased and that they would show favor to the people to bring them harvests and, and fertility and prosperity and all this other stuff. Well, Moses, as a royal prince, was called to learn about the main God that was over the royal household. Guess what that God was? That's correct. If you look at Moses, if you look at Pharaoh's headpieces, there is a wadget or a demonic snake goddess in the form of a cobra on the pharaoh's headpiece. Now, the Bible proves that's true. Let's just put up that little ditty there. It's Exodus 3, 4, the edited version of Exodus 3, uh, 4, 3. Sorry. This is what it says in Exodus 4. It says that the snake was, quote, the symbol of royal and divine power worn on the crown of the pharaohs. So... What was the main god or goddess over the royal household of Pharaoh? It was a what? Moses grew up in Pharaoh's household. Part of his education required that he knew all about that. He was taught about the snake. He was taught to worship the snake. I'm sure his tutors showed him how to bring, you know, sacrifices to the altar for the snake. He grew up doing that. Do you think you can do that for that long and not have some sort of residual cling-on thing happening to you? So then Moses ends up killing an Egyptian who was beating one of his fellow Israelites, and he gets banished as a murderer into the desert for 40 years. And then God gives him an encounter. God has him see a burning bush. And Moses turns aside to go see this phenomena about this bush that's burning, but it's not being consumed. And it's in that moment that God commissions Moses to free the nation of Israelites from their slavery in the control of the serpent king, Pharaoh. How many of you know you cannot, God is going to commission and is commissioned or has commissioned every single person in here to do a call for him. You are called to go into all the world, all of Egypt, and deliver people from the control of the snake king. But before you do it, you better be desnakeified. Otherwise, you will not have power over that snake king. You will not have power over the people that are in the world that need salvation and deliverance and healing. You will not have power. You have to get rid of the snakes you're carrying around before you can carry out your commission. Do you understand that? That's what happened to Moses. We're going to look at the story. Watch. Go to Exodus 3, 1 through 5. <clears throat> it says, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the back of the west side of the wilderness and came to Orb or Sinai, Sinai, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush and he looked and behold the bush burned with fire yet was not consumed and Moses said I will now turn aside and see this great sight why the bush is not burned and the Lord saw him that he turned aside to see it 
And God called out of him in the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. He said, here I am. And God said, do not come near. Put your shoes off your feet for the place which you are standing is holy ground. So Moses goes up and he sees this bush on fire, but it's not being consumed. Now he's about to be commissioned as he's standing before this fiery bush. We'll just go really quick to Exodus 3, 7 through 10. It says, the Lord tells him, I've seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt. I've heard their cries because of their taskmasters and oppressors. I know their sorrows and sufferings and trials. And I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and bring them out of the land to a good and large place, a land flowing with milk and honey, a land of plenty, to the place of the Canaanites, Hittites, on and on, ites. Now behold, the cry of the Israelites has come before me, and I've also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. Come now, therefore, I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring forth my people. So in front of this fiery bush, God is commissioning Moses to deliver the nation of Israel from the snake king. Why a fiery bush? Because you see, God doesn't just pick a sign out of a hat. Ah, today I'll do a rainbow. No, today I'll do uh, the, the water parting and people going through. Now today I'll do this. Now today I'll bring ten plagues. He always picks a specific sign and a specific wonder for a specific reason. Why did he pick a bush that was on fire that was not consumed and just kept on burning and burning and burning and burning while Moses stood there? Because he's trying to do something. He's trying to drive the snake that Moses has been walking around for his entire life out of his life and he didn't even know he had it so that he can then go and deliver people from control of the snake king. <clears throat> so look what happens. He's standing in front of the fiery bush. It's burning. It's not consumed. It keeps on burning, burning, burning because there's work being done in him. God commissions him, says, you're going to go. Now you go and you free the people from, from the hands of Pharaoh. And Moses protests. Oh, I can't. I can't speak. I can't do this. I can't do that. And God just completely dismisses his, his inadequacies, completely dismisses them. Then we see what happens next. We're going to go to Exodus 4 now. Go to Exodus 4, 1 through 3. Moses starts this chapter with more of his inadequacies, please, about why he can't do this. He says, but behold, they'll not believe me, meaning the people of Israel will not believe me that I've met you on this mountain. They will not listen to or obey my voice, for they'll say the Lord has not appeared to you. Number Verse 2 says, and the Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? He says all these inadequacies, like, I can't go, they won't believe me. And God doesn't even address those. He doesn't even respond to that. The next question he says is, to him is, what is that in your hand? Do you think God didn't know what's in Moses' hand? Of course he knows. Why is he asking? Because he wants to know if Moses knows what he's been carrying around for 40 years. Since he left Pharaoh's household. And Moses answers like, duh. He says, it's a rod. And God says, cast it down on the ground in front of the fiery tree. Cast it down on the ground. And it became what it really was. The serpent, the symbol of royal and divine power worn on the crown of pharaohs. And Moses fled from before it. Snakes hate fire. Snakes are masters of camouflage technology. That snake that he picked up in Pharaoh's house had been disguising itself as a shepherd's rod all those decades. But in front of the fiery presence of God, that fire drove that snake out of its hiding place so Moses could see what he'd been really carrying around this whole time. It says that Moses fled from it. Why did he flee from it? Not just be, look. Why would he flee from it? He's lived in the desert for 40 years. You don't think he's run into a grip of snakes? Why is he fleeing from a snake all of a sudden? Because you know what? When you have something in common with a demon, you're afraid of it. At that moment, he had no dominion over that snake. 
Because that snake, he had something in his soul that he picked up from all those years of serving that snake and bringing sacrifices to its altar and all those things that they, that they taught him to do. He had that thing inside of him that was in common with that serpent. That's why he was afraid of it and he fled from it. But then God says something on the next verse. Because see, the fire was not only there. That fiery bush was not only there to drive that snake out of hiding so Moses would know what he had been carrying around. It was also there to burn up the chaff inside his soul that allowed that snake to be there in the first place. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. He will separate the chaff from the wheat and burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Who was John the Baptist talking to? He was talking to, oh, you brood of viper Pharisees. The fiery tree was there to drive the snake out of hiding, but to also burn up the chaff that allowed that snake to be there in the first place. Look at the next verse. Then the Lord says to Moses, put forth your hand and take it by the tail. Excuse me? Take it by the tail? Everybody knows you don't pick up a snake by the tail. It spins around, it'll bite you. Right? Why is God saying... Now take it by the tail, because he's saying, you don't realize, you just now, in the face of this fiery bush and my fiery presence, figured out what you've been carrying around this whole time, a snake. But now, that same fiery bush has been burning up that chaff, and now, if you pick it up by the tail, you're going to have total dominion over it, because you've been healed. You have nothing in you in common with it anymore. So he reaches down and he picks it up by the tail. And it says, and it became a rod in his hand. But this wasn't just any rod. Now this is the real rod. This is the rod of power. This is the rod that's going to call down the plagues on Egypt. This is the rod that's going to cause the Red Sea to part so they can escape their enemies. This is the rod that's going to strike the rock and give water to millions of people in the desert. It's now the rod of power. This is you guys. God is calling us to change the world. He's calling us to invade Egypt. He's calling us to pull the slaves out of the grip of the snake king. You cannot do this before you get in the presence of that fire of God. So that anything that you're carrying around with you can be driven out of hiding and everything that's in you that's allowed it to be there can get burned up by the fire. Did you hear what I said? I remember right after I got this revelation, I, I cried. I cried when I read that. I cried. I said, you're so good. You made sure Moses was clean before he went against Pharaoh. And you notice when he went against Pharaoh that his rod now swallowed up the serpents of the, of the magicians in Egypt. Oh, now your rod of power is going to swallow them up. Chew them up and spit them out, baby. It wouldn't have been able to do that before if your rod was really a snake. I had a dream. I had a dream I was walking through a park. There's a bunch of people. Everybody's happy. I got this little gift bag. I'm so happy because I got a little gift in this little gift bag, you know, and I'm walking along, and all of a sudden I heard a rustle inside the gift bag. I was like, what's that? And then I heard, like, I felt it moving around, and I set it down, and I shouted. I go, everybody back. It's a snake. And sure enough, the snake comes slithering out of my gift bag, it slithers away from the people, and everyone is safe. I just didn't happen to be soaking in the fire for a couple weeks at that point. And God said this to me. He said, see, you had a snake in your gifts, your gift bag, your gifts. And if you kept on going, so proud of your gifts and your gift bag, you would have gotten everybody bit that you were ministering to. The snake has to come out of your gift bag. Did you hear me? You don't even know you're carrying it around. I didn't know. Because they're masters of camouflage technology. Just like that me listening to that awesome preacher. And then black snakes are zipping up the lines of my earphones to try to implant me with a deaf adder spirit. Stop. 
Don't release. Don't be responsible for releasing a snake infestation. You as leaders are called. You're being commissioned. And now you need to stand in front of that fiery tree, that presence of God, and have those snakes be driven out of their hiding place while all the chaff inside your soul that's allowing them to be there in the first place is being burned up. Let's have Dwight up here. Everybody come up and get communion. Pray in tongues while you're standing there. Don't just talk. Pray in tongues. Let's start to cultivate an atmosphere of fire. An atmosphere of fire. An atmosphere of fire. her back in like a week okay. and tell us what the progress is.
rest on us. Come rest on us. Father, we come to again. Open up the gates and heaven on it. Come rest on us. Hey, come rest on us. Father, we come to you again. Open up the gates and Okay, how are we doing? Are we almost ready? You know, uh, how many of you can actually get on your knees? I think we need to go all fire on this. Okay, all fire. Okay, so let's get on our knees before the Lord. Or, you know, if you can't, just try to do what you can to be submitted to the Lord. Amen. Okay. All right. Remember what Paul said. When you're taking communion, we're supposed to examine ourselves. And that if we judge ourselves, we'll not face divine judgment. So let's do that right now. People say repentance is out of... Uh, you know, style, who cares what style says? I think repentance is so awesome because it um, humbles ourselves before the Lord and something amazing happens when we humble ourselves. And I, I believe in grace totally. I know we definitely need grace and we will decree that. But let's start with repentance. Just say, Lord Jesus, I come before you knowing that you have a great plan for my life. I know you're going to use me to free people of every walk of life from the control of the world and the God of the world. In order to do that, 
I know I have to have every snake removed from me that might be attacking my body, my mind, my finances, my business, my ministry, my children, every part of my life. I'm asking that as I partake of your body and your blood, that the crushing takes place. It crushes the head of every serpent that's on my life. And including every serpent that's disguised itself as the rod of power in my life. Or that's hiding in my gift bag. Lord God, I will not run my business or my church or my ministry or my family through a power of a snake disguised as the anointing. <clears throat> I will not allow it. And I do not want to walk in the administration of the gifts when there is a serpent in my gift bag. Lord God, in Jesus' name, I repent for having the, the venom of asps under my lips because I've had bitterness and cursing in my life. Lord God, I repent for being religious spirited Controlling and manipulative, like the brood of viper Pharisees. Lord, I repent and I renounce every idol in my life. Because anyone who has an idol is cursed. And then it allows witchcraft and serpents to be active in my life. Now I want you to think about the idols. Maybe you made your life an idol, your family an idol, your ministry an idol, your church an idol. Maybe you made an idol out of social media or money or belongings or food. Whatever it is, I want you to repent of that right now. Because that idol is allowing witches and serpents. So if it's food, just say, I repent of all, abusing food, God. I, I repent of making an idol out of my church, out of my family. I repent of making an idol out of myself. I want you to go before the Lord right now. And, and, and help, with the help of the Holy Spirit, identify those idols in your life. Thank you. Oh, God, right now, every idol, bring it to our minds, God. We don't want those idols. We don't want those curses. You're going to break those curses because we renounce that idolatry. We renounce money. We renounce social media. We renounce food. We renounce the ministry while we've made the ministry and the church into an idol. God, we renounce every idolatrous spirit and every idolatrous altar in our life. We renounce it. We break our agreement with it. Right now, heal us of that right now in the name of Jesus. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now, God. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Now say, I renounce witchcraft. And I break every curse that the witches have brought against me because Jesus already took the curse. It's illegal. And I break my agreement with it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now take the bread. Say the body and the blood. Crushes the head of the snakes. It releases a judgment against them. As I partake this, every accusation, every assault, every snake attack is being trampled by the power of the cross. And as I eat the living bread, the venom of the serpent that has been put in my body to cause pain, disease, and disorder has to come out 
And my body has to regenerate with the life of Christ from the bread of life, the living bread. Now partake. Take the cup. See, this blood cleanses me of every sin that broke a hedge, a hole in my hedge. It reestablishes the hedge of protection around me that becomes so impenetrable that no serpent can come in and bite me. It even heals the trauma of the storms that I've lived through that allow the snake to bite me. Now, right there, I want you to let the Holy Spirit remind you. What trauma have you been through that you're still under the, you're still a prisoner to it. It's still affecting you. It's still causing you pain. It still causes you to grieve. It still causes you sadness or depression. What storm have you suffered from? What trauma have you endured? What stressful situation or situations have beset you? Think about them now and just lift them up to God. Cast them over to him because he cares for you. Just say, I cast, I cast that storm over to you, God. I cast this person over to you. I cast that person over to you. I cast this issue I've, I've had to fight against, this trauma that I've suffered from. Just start casting every single trauma that the enemy has put on you through a storm over on the Lord right now. Cast it. Cast it. Say, I let go of it and I receive healing. I let go of it and I receive healing. I let go of it and I know you're healing me. I let go of the grief and you're healing me. I let go of that traumatic situation. I know you're healing me. I let go of it. Let go of every traumatic situation. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, take the cup. Now, I want you to start praying in the spirit. She can mana 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 she can mana 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 Fire, 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 
fire, fire, fire, fire, fire, fire, fire, fire, fire, fire, fire, fire, fire, fire. Fire, fire, fire. Put your head on top of your head and go, I receive the baptism of fire right now. Say, Jesus, baptize me with fire, the Holy Spirit and fire. Lay hands on each other and begin to pray and command the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. I release the fire. I release the baptism of fire. I release the Holy Spirit in the baptism of fire. I ask that it would burn up the chaff inside your soul right now. Holy Spirit in fire. Holy Spirit in fire. Burn, 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 burn. Holy Spirit in fire. Burn, 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 burn. Holy Spirit 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 fire burn 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 Holy Spirit fire burn 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 Come on, pray in tongues. Say it's a fire, fire, fire. Pray in tongues and say fire, fire, fire. Pray in tongues and say fire, fire, fire. Fire, fire, fire. Fire, fire. Call down fire. Fire, fire, 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 fire. Not enough people are moving their lips. If you don't call down fire, it ain't gonna come down. You better start calling down fire because you want to burn up them snakes. You got to start calling down fire. Ask God to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire so that you can start burning. You can start burning with fire. Burning with fire. Burning with fire. It'll burn up that chaff. Put your hand on your belly and pray. Fire in my belly. Say, fire in my belly. Shout, fire in my belly. 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 Fire, fire, fire. 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 Fire. Wow, fire. 
Jesus, bring that fire! Fire! Now I want you to say this. Say, Lord Jesus, I judge those demons with fire. I judge those snakes with exosia authority. They have to let go. I release the power of judicial decisions against them. I trample them with a court decree. I judge them. They have to come out. They can no longer harm me. I'm ascended in the courts of heaven. And I speak a legal restraining order against their activity in the name of Jesus. Now we're going to sing. We're going to have a little fire song because fire just landed on my left arm. A flame of fire is, left, is on my left arm right now. So let's sing so we can start blazing even hotter. Amen. Come on. So fire away, come do it, it again. again. Open up the gates. Heaven, heaven on in. in. Come and rest on us right now. Come rest on us. Fire, fire and wind. Come and do it again. Open up the gates. Heaven on in. Come and rest on us. Fire, come and rest on us. Fire, fire and wind. Come do it again. Open up the gates. Heaven on in. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Fire and wind, yeah. Fire and wind. Come and do it again. again. Open up the gates. Heaven on in. Come rest on us. Come rest. Come rest on us. Fire. Fire and wind. Come and do it again. Open up the gates, heaven on it, come and rest on us, come rest on us, fire and wind, come and do it again, won't you open up the gates, heaven on it tonight, come rest on us, come rest on us, fire and Heaven on in come rest on us. Come rest on Holy Spirit, Holy Wind, Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want tonight. Yeah. You're all we want. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Fire of the Spirit, come rest. On us, you're all we want. You're all we want now. So come down, Spirit. When you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you're moving. I'm here and I know you come and feel me. Come now, Spirit. When you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. Fire and wind, do it again. Open the gates, heaven on it right now. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Oh, fire and wind, come and do it again. Open the gates. Heaven on it, come rest on us. Yeah, come rest on us. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open the gates, said heaven on it. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Fire and wind, come do it again. Open the gates. Heaven on it, come rest on us. Come rest on us. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. 
You're all we want. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. You're all we want. You're all we want. You're all we want. Now, some of you feel movement in your body. How many people feel some movement in your body? Like you feel something moving around. Wave your hand at me. If you feel something moving around, that's a snake. Okay? Now, everybody get around. Put your hands up. The people, the people that are having the moving, put your hands up. Okay, now. People around the people with their hands up, go to them and fill them with Holy Spirit and fire. Command the baptism to come on them. Go to people that have their hands up. People, if you have to come out of your seats so people can get to you, everybody start filling them with fire. Go. judgments against every snake. Keep going. Keep going while I pray. Keep going. Father, right now as these people pray, I decree fiery judgments are being released against the serpent from the ancient of days court. Right now, I intercede on their behalf. Right now, I command trauma to be healed. Then I command judgments of fire from Daniel 7 from the judge's bench. I command the books to be open, the court to be seated, and the court to be in session on their behalf right now. That the court would, these, would release to earth the judge's bench that has burning wheels of fire. I ask that for justice, that you go back in time. You go back in time. You go back in time right now to where these demons came in in the first place. And you burn up that root. You burn up the root of bitterness. You put grace and blood on pride. You put a restraining order on Leviathan. And you arrest his activity. And you burn with fire every demonic snake that's on these people right now. I ask, Lord, that this system of demonic assault would end right now in the name of Jesus. I ask that their trauma 
would be healed. All the pain in their soul would be healed by the Holy Ghost right now. Holy Ghost, burn it with fire, Holy Ghost. I decree all the chaff being burned up. All the chaff being burned up. If you feel like you need to take another round of communion, then come up here and get it. Let's pour some more juice in that pitcher. If you need more communion, take it. And decree that that devil is being crushed. That devil is being crushed. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. The crushing of the cross of Jesus Christ being released into this room right now. Right now. I address every demonic power that would try to raise up right now in the name of Jesus. And I gag you. I gag you. And then you snakes, you got to come out. You have to come out in Jesus' name. I break ownership off bloodlines. The snake that has, and the witchcraft and the idols and the altars that have claimed the bloodlines of people. I cancel, I cancel your right for the bloodline. They took the blood of Jesus. So now their bloodline is Christ. It is Christ. It is Christ. It is Christ. It is Christ. Take more communion. It releases the power of the cross into the room. And it heals your soul of trauma. Right now, that trauma is coming out. That trauma is coming out. The fire is being released. The fire is being released. And the cross is being released in this room. Right now, the crushing. You cannot resist the crushing that the cross brings into the room. Right now. And every serpent must unwind. Every serpent must unwind from your body, from your soul, from your ministry, from your money, from your family, from your business, from your ministry, by court judgment, by court decree, by court decree, you must unwind. You must unwind from their minds. In fact, wherever you feel the pain or the pressure, just say, I take up that serpent, you unwind it. Say, I take up that serpent and I unwind it from my head. I unwind it from my knee. I unwind it from my hip. I unwind it from my body. And I cast it into the fiery pit. I command it to burn and never return. Fire, fire, fire. Fire, fire, fire. Fire, fire, fire. Fire, fire, fire. Angels of fire. Angels of fire. Angels of fire. Angels of fire. Fire, fire, 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 fire. 
fire, fire, fire. We celebrate you, Jesus. We celebrate your love for everybody here. We celebrate you by doing this in remembrance of you. The power of the cross being released into this room. I take this on behalf of everyone in here. I eat the blood and I drink the blood and I eat the body of Christ on behalf of you all in intercession right now. The crushing. I release the crushing. I release the crushing. I release the power to break the curse. The power to break the curse. The power to break the curse. I release the power to cast down every idol right now in the name of Jesus. Right now. Right now. Right now. I release the bread of life to drive out the serpent venom from your body in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Fire, 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 fire. Everybody, fire, fire, everybody, fire, fire, everybody, fire, 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 everybody, fire, 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 everybody, fire, 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 fire. Everybody, fire, 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 fire. Everybody, fire, 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 fire. We're winning, fire, we're winning, come on. Fire, fire, fire. Fire, unity is winning. Fire, 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 fire. Everybody together. Fire, 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 fire. All of us. Fire, 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 fire. Now follow me. I go. Fire, fire, fire. You go. I say. Fire, fire, fire. You say. I said, fire, fire, fire. You said, fire, 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 everybody, fire, 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 let me hear you, fire, 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 let me hear you, fire, 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 fire. Fire, fire, fire. Now say, holy, holy, holy. 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 I see the Prince of Peace. He's descending because we're calling out for his fire and his presence. Holy, holy, holy. 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 
Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Fire. 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 Holy, holy, holy. 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 Do we have more bread? Holy, holy, holy. 
we have more bread for everybody? I'd like to have more bread. again at the table. Come and feast again at the table. Come and feast again at the table. Release more of the cross into the room. We do it in remembrance of you, Jesus. We do it in remembrance of you, Jesus. You're healing our trauma. You're removing the landing strips. You're closing the breaks in the hedge right now. Your power, your goodness, your graciousness, your authority and your might. You're closing the holes in the hedge right now with your blood and your body, Jesus. Jesus, right now you're rebuilding the hedge of protection as you close those holes in the hedge, as you crush all the serpents' heads. Now the serpents are dead, the serpents are dead. 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 You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. The serpents are dead. You're crushing their head. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. Crushing their head. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. Crushing their head. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. You're crushing their head. How many people felt swirling in their breasts or their private areas? Raise your hands. 
because the serpent curses the breast and the womb. How many had the swirling stop now? Is it still swirling or is it gone? Because the serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. The serpents are dead. He's crushing their head. No more cancer in the breast. No more cancer in the womb. No more cancer. The serpents are dead. No more cancer. No more cancer. Who has less pain in their body now? Raise your hand and wave it at me really big. I'm going to count. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty. Forty people got desnakeified. <coughs> Even more than that. How many people just plain old feel better? Let's give Jesus a big praise. Yeah.